Welcome back. All right, six games that we're going to take a look at now, uh, beginning with this board that this game was the only thing that was on for a while. It really wasn't that much going on. And it's interesting because all the scoring was done very, very early in this one, and then it was kind of a chess match from there. So Columbus looking to build on a win against uh, Carolina. Uh, it's Merzlikens versus Kemper. Good back and forth early. On the first shot that Washington had, they scored. Gustafson scores from Dowden Hathaway at 243. Uh, the shots are 2-1 to one for Columbus, four minutes in. They were opposed away from 2-0. The referee said it was no goal when the Caps asked. And, you know, it's an interesting one for me because uh, if that had gone in, who knows? Because Elvis was shaky early in this one. Backstrom tries to bank one in off of Elvis's pad as, again, we're seeing some shakiness here from Merzlikens. Momentum for the Caps. Gavrikov steals one from Milano. Long stretch without a whistle. The shots are only three apiece halfway through. Uh, Jensen has a blast on a face-off win that's held. There was a leg save on Eller. The rebound is cleared. Uh, Meyer misses wide on a rush. Ovechkin out there throwing hits. It's what he does. He's number three on the active list of hits in the National Hockey League. Uh, Marchenko fires high, and then Ovechkin had a rush chance that was saved. There's a post for Meyer as the team's trade chances. Uh, Kemper keeps the puck out with three white jerseys at the net. Three blue jackets right there. He keeps it out. Uh, 225 left. We get two minutes of four on four, or we would have, but with 158 left, it becomes a four on three power play for the Capitals. Ovechkin has a blast that's held as all that comes to an end. So we go to the second period. The score one nothing Washington. The shots are two to one for Columbus at three minutes. Caps press at three and a half minutes. Good back and forth follows that. Foodie has a net drive that's saved as he's looking for his first NHL goal. It's going to happen at some point, I think. I, I believe in Foodie on that level. Back-to-back uh, -back icings by the Caps. Columbus presses at six and a half minutes. Bernie has a shot. That's held, which allows the Capitals to get a line change. Olivier challenges Wilson, but Wilson says in his first game back, no thanks. I'm sure he'll accommodate him at a later date. Not today. Uh, don't blame him for not fighting there. Elvis poke checks Sherry on a net drive. Uh, Bayreuther then had a shot that was saved. Near miss for Johnson. Columbus pressing. Uh, shots are 7-2 to two for the Blue Jackets with seven and a half minutes left. Gavrikov had been out since taking a hit on the boards. He would return, though. Uh, we're taking a good look at these guys who are on the trade block, and when they get hurt, it's definitely noteworthy. So, 127 left. Uh, the Caps draw a power play. Columbus clears it out early. Ovechkin has a one-timer that's gloved and held. We're going to the third. It's still 1-0 for Washington. Third period, Columbus finishes the kill. One shot allowed. A high stick gives the Black Blue Jackets a power play. There's a shorthanded Eller chance. That saved. Uh, Bemstrom has a rush chance that deflects out. Kuznetsov prevents a Corrali chance in close. Might have been a goal he was preventing there. The referees had put their whistles away at this point. Both teams had uh, penalties would have been called earlier in the game, not being called here. Uh, Line A has a rush chance that's held. The shots are three apiece at seven and a half minutes. Kuznetsov has a net feed that's held. Backstrom uh, hits peak and ends up going to the box for interference. Uh, he disagreed with the call, but the puck wasn't there, so that is interference. Uh, Peek gets up. He appears to be okay. It was it was kind of a rough hit, but showing Backstrom's pretty strong right now. Uh, Line A has a blast that's held. That power play's killed off. The shots are 8-4. to four. Columbus with seven and a half minutes left as Kemper played fantastic hockey. Wilson has a wraparound. That saved Marchenko. Net drive, that's blocked out. The Caps rush the other way. Ross Living fires one wide after the goalie pull. Uh, Kemper holds on to a chance from Johnson with 108 left. Columbus calls a timeout. Uh, line A is a blast that saved the Caps cleared out. Goudreau then had a shot that was held. And the final score is one nothing for the Washington Capitals. So there's your Tony the Tiger magnet because Kemper was great. 23-14-6 uh, and six record now for the Caps. For the Blue Jackets, 12-25-2. But the Blue Jackets did outplay them. They outshot them the whole way through. 12-8 in the first, 12-5 in the second, 14-6 in the third. Final shots, 38-19. Both teams go 0-2 on the power play. They out-hit Washington, too, 32-29. to Merzlikens saves 18 out of 19. Kemper saves all 38 shots for his 29th career shutout. That's not too shabby. And uh, I already need to change boards because there's only one game on this one. And now we move on to the other five games. I had thought about doing just a recap for that game. I, I thought about it and I thought, nah. So, <laughs> Calgary in against the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, this was a surprise, got to be honest, because Calgary needs to start getting some points and not just these points they keep getting in overtime or shootout losses. This is where 
there's two ways of looking at Calgary. Either they keep picking up points or they keep losing points. And I'm more on the side of they're losing points when they don't win these ones. So it's Markstrom versus Staylock early jump for Calgary. But at 239, Reichel scores his first from Seth Jones. And the Hawks 5-3-2 and two, and they score first, which shows they don't score first very often. We're halfway through the season. They've done it 10 times coming into today. Today's the 11th. Hawks look for another. Then there's Lewis to Zahorna. That chance is blocked. The Flames get a power play and they score on it at 8.49. It's Lindholm from Toffoli and Anderson. Just taps the rebound in. But it doesn't stay tied for long. Blackwell gets a goal for Chicago from Lafferty and Reese Johnson at 10.10. The Flames press with eight and a half minutes left. Tanev has a shot that deflects wide. Caleb Jones then had a rush chance. That was saved. Kadri with a net feed. That's blocked out. And a good press by the Flames to close it. So they're down 2-1 to one after 1. But it could be worse, right? So second period. Uh, the Blackhawks actually get a two-goal lead. It's Kurashev at 35 seconds from Reichel and Domi. Uh, that's a 2-1-1. One, one. He buries it. And that ends the night for Markstrom. Uh, Vladar goes into the net. Uh, one oh two into the period. Huberto answers from Lucic. The Flames then press to tie it. Mangiapane's denied in close. Tyler Johnson fires one wide on a two-on-one. We then had a fight between Stone and McCabe. I didn't have that one on my sheet. Uh, Flames get a power play. They score on this one as well. It's Kadri from Lindholm and Toffoli at 9 minutes and 40 seconds. So the Flames have tied it. And again, I'm fully expecting them to win. They need two points here. Uh, Flames press with eight minutes left. Uyghur has a shot that's held. Hawks get a power play. That's killed off. We're going into the third period tied at three. Uh, Anderson has a screenshot that saved. The shots are 4-2 to two for Chicago. Six minutes in, the Flames get a power play. Good cycle, but the Hawks are blocking them out. Uh, that was killed off. Only two shots get through. Flames press with nine minutes left. The shots are 9-5 to five for Chicago with six minutes left. We then had back-to-back -back icings by Chicago as Calgary's pressing, trying to get that lead. Uh, the Flames would press in the final minute, but we're going overtime. Calgary's record in overtime coming into this one was 2-4. and four, Chicago 2-2. Two and two. So you can see Calgary had... Frittered away four points in overtime. Was it going to be five? Let's discuss. Flames control early. Hannafin has a shot that's saved. And then on a net drive, Domi scores from Reichel and McCabe at one minute and four seconds. So Chicago wins this one in overtime. Four to three. They go to 10, 25, and four with the win. Calgary 19, 14, and eight with the overtime loss. Uh, shots in this one, 18 to 10 Calgary in the first, 16 to four Calgary in the second, and then 11 to 10 Calgary in the third. They even outshot him in the overtime 2-1, but Chicago shot's the one that matters. Final shot's 47-25 for Calgary. Power plays the Flames 2 for 3. Chicago 0 for 1. So Calgary only had one 5-on-5 five -five goal tonight. Uh, hits were 22-21 for Chicago. Markstrom saves 8 out of 11. Vladar saves 13 out of 14. Uh, Stalock saves 44 out of 47. So another good game from Stalock and for, for uh, Calgary. I, I don't know. I, I just, this is one of those games we could be looking back on at the end of the season and say, you know, Calgary would have had a better chance if they'd won games like this one as a for instance. Next up, uh, Pittsburgh in against Arizona. Uh, this one looked like Arizona might be able to steal it, and then Pittsburgh said no. Pittsburgh came into this on a six-game losing streak. Uh, DeSmith versus Vimelka in this one. Opening minute, the Coyotes get a power play. Pittsburgh kills that off. They only allow two shots. Uh, there's a post for Zucker on a rush, and then on the fourth shot that's uh, on the net by Arizona, they score. It's Hayden from Keller and Schmaltz at 5:17. The Penguins look to answer. There's a press by the Penguins with eight and a half minutes left. Crosby's robbed on a breakaway. The shots are four apiece with six minutes left. So Arizona's not generating a ton here, but the Coyotes would press with five minutes left. Gunther has a screenshot. That's held. Penguins press, draws them a power play. That's killed off. And then with 12.1 seconds left, the Coyotes draw their own power play. So that rolls over into the second period. Gunther has a chance that's saved. There's a near miss for Hayton. That's killed off. Uh, Chikrin, not on the bench at this point. He would come back. But again, we keep an eye on these guys that are supposed to be on the block and might be on the move. Uh, good forechecking by the Coyotes. However, at 5.56, Pittsburgh ties it. Gensel from Crosby and Ruta. He buries that one in close. No chance for Vimelka. Chikrin would return. Uh, after Chikrin returns, Gensel just outweights Vimelka and scores from basically the same spot as the first goal. Rust and Crosby with the assists at 9 minutes and 11 seconds. Penguins get a power play. It's a 4-minute power play. The Coyotes do not let them set up. Uh, they killed it off. The Penguins go back to the power play. They then had 33 seconds of 5-on-3. So, of course, you call a timeout to discuss what the strategy is. 
Uh, the five on three they don't score on. There's a minute and two seconds left in the five on four to start the third period. Uh, there's a shorthanded chance for McBain to start the third period. That was blocked out. The power play is killed off. It was Chikrin that was in the box last. So he comes out. Uh, and don't put your beer on the ledge. So it happens in this game. I've seen it happen. So when you're sitting front row, there's a ledge, right? There's a glass and there's the ledge. Do not put your beer on the ledge. If they don't have a cup holder, I don't know, hold on to it, put it at your feet. Put it. Very often if I have a drink at an event, I'll have it between my feet. So, I mean, if it gets knocked over, it's because I'm not paying much attention. That's on me. But don't put your drink on that ledge because it'll get knocked off, as a guy's beer did. So there you go. Near miss for Gensel and close. The shots are 5-2 to two for the Penguins at 7 minutes. But Zucker uh, ends up getting a goal at 10.58 from Malkin and Joseph. The Penguins then get a power play. Carter tips one wide. That's killed off. Pedersen fires one wide. The Coyotes clear it out. Uh, goalie pull with 2.17 left. That leads to... Jeff Carter getting a goal at 18.55. He just kind of sweeps it in from center ice. So your final score is 4-1. to one. Pittsburgh goes to 20-13-6. The losing streak stops. Uh, for Arizona, they're 13-21-5 with the loss. Their losing streak continues. Shots in this one, 9-8 Pittsburgh in the first. 13-7 Arizona in the second. 12-3 Pittsburgh in the third. They just shut them down. Final shots, 28-24 for Pittsburgh. The Penguins go 0-6 on the power play, so that's troubling. Arizona's 0 for 2. The hits 31 to 20 for Arizona. DeSmith saves 23 out of 24. Vamelka saves 24 out of 27. And so, yeah, for Arizona, it's just it's another loss. Is that five in a row, I think, in regulation for them? It's it's been a while since they won one. All right, next up. St. Louis, the Blues in against Minnesota. And uh, for Minnesota, they didn't stay third on the power rankings for long. These two results mean Toronto is now the third spot team on the power rankings. I will give that away. On a Sunday. Doesn't bother me. Uh, Grace versus Gustafson in this one. The shots are 3-1 to one for the Wild at 3.5 minutes. Uh, the Wild press at 6 minutes. Cairo has a rush chance. that saved. Blues get a power play. It's a 4-minute power play. But Schnevich is denied. The Wild clear it out. But during the first 2 minutes, St. Louis does score. It's sawed from Neighbors and Pareko at 8.17. And then the Wild kill off the other 2 minutes. Uh, Blues press with 3.5 minutes left. Falk has a shot that saved. Addison's denied as the Wild then press back. And Kaprizov's robbed in the final minute. Kaprizov had a lot of opportunities tonight. Just Grace is very good against Minnesota. So second period. Thomas with a rush. He fires high. The Blues press at three and a half minutes. Wild get a power play. An aggressive penalty kill by the Blues does kill that off. The shots are two to one for St. Louis at nine minutes. So really a nice defensive shell there. And it was it was a chess match. Blues get a power play. There's a shorthanded rush by Duhame that helps to finish off that kill. Eric Sinek was down, but he does get back up. He would go into concussion protocol. A clean hit, but he still goes into concussion protocol. Shaw's denied and close. The Blues rush. Rosen has a shot that's held. Uh, the Wild press with two minutes left. Dewar is then denied and close. We're going to the third period. It's still 1-0 St. Louis. 12 shots for the Wild in the first two periods. 15 shot blocks by St. Louis. So they were blocking more than hits the net. That would change in the third period. Eric Sinek back, back in to start the third. Things get pushy after a hold by Grace. The Blues get a power play. They're overpassing on that. Thomas with a pass, and you could just tell Panger wanted to just jump out of the <laughs> out of where he was and, and go down to the ice and say, what are you doing, Robert Thomas? Um, even said, you know, that, that could happen. So the Wild cleared out. They do kill that off. Uh, Dumba then shots, his shots blocked as the Wild press. The Wild end up drawing themselves a power play. So the wild draw power play, Felino passes, should have shot. Uh, and then right as Shen comes out of the box, this is one of those plays. you got to watch him. Shen gets a goal from Saad at 14 minutes. So Saad gets in the puck, Shen puts it in as he comes out of the penalty box. Goalie pull with 3.39 left because it's Minnesota and they're down by two. So it's always an aggressive goalie pull by Dean Evison and necessary when you're down by two. Uh, then with 2.54 left, it becomes a six on four. Uh, Duhame's denied. The Blues are blocking him out too. The power play's killed off, so it's a six-on-five press. Uh, Kaprizov's tonight. He had a shift that was three and a half minutes. Now, I know there's some whistles, but still, long shift. Uh, Shen would hit the empty net at 1954 from Bichnevich and Pareko, which makes your final score 3 nothing. And again, the Tony the Tiger Magnet has great performance by Grice for his 16th career shutout. St. Louis goes to 20-18-3. So they lose in Montreal yesterday, and today they win in Minnesota. No idea. Uh, Minnesota 22-14-3 with the loss. The shots in this one, 
14 to 9 St. Louis in the first, 6 to 3 St. Louis in the second, and then 23 to 4 Minnesota in the third. So going to the third, they're like, hey, Grace, you got this. Uh, final shots, 35 to 24 for Minnesota power plays. The Blues go 1 for 4. Minnesota goes 0 for 3. The hits, 23 to 19 Minnesota. Grace, 35 saves for his 16th shutout. Gustafson, and that, that's career, not this year. That's his first shutout as a St. Louis Blues goaltender. Gustafson, 21 saves on 23 shots. He played well, but overshadowed by the fact that um, his team lost and got shut out. All right, next up, Toronto in against Philadelphia. So Philadelphia had a four-game winning streak. Toronto uh, takes care of that. They sweep the season series. Uh, Murray versus Hart in this one. So a couple games ago, it was uh, the, the goaltending for the Leafs has kind of fallen apart. Nope, Samsonov had a good game. Now Murray has a good game. Uh, four leaf shots in the first minute and a half, letting Carter Hart know he's kind of on his own early. Flyers press, but they don't get shots out of it. The Leafs are picking off passes as well. Flyers press at seven and a half minutes, get some shots out of that, but it is Toronto that opens the scoring. It's Yarncroke from Marner and Timmins at 9.51. That was the seventh shot of the game for Toronto to Philadelphia's three. Tippett then has a chance that's held. Nylander can't bury one from the slot, but late in the period at 17.44, Aston Reese scores. From Holmberg, it is 16 seconds later, and on a turnover, Konechny gets Philadelphia on the board. So after one period, it's 2-1 to one Toronto. Second period, early press by the Leafs. However, the Flyers end up getting a power play. Uh, Timmins was out briefly. Now, Timmins in the lineup because Brody was out, and it was a big night for Timmins. He did not stay out of the lineup for very long. Uh, the Leafs do kill off that power play. Man, Philly fans are brutal to their own power play. A lot of booing towards the end of that. Lilligren's denied from the slot. A uh, near miss for Sanheim, and then at 7:01, Timmins, 53rd game of his NHL career, his first NHL goal. Uh, Marner and Tavares with the assists on that one at 7:01. But again, Philadelphia answers relatively quickly at 8:50. It's Delorier from Patrick Brown. The Flyers then get a power play as they're looking to add. There's a post for Lilligren, shorthanded, and then on the next faceoff, uh, Lilligren gets the shorthanded goal. He scores from Yarncroke at 10:07. Uh, Tavares would then add one at 12:22 from Yarncroke. So Yarncroke all over the board today. Uh, Flyers go back to the power play that was killed off. The Flyers had a little bit of momentum out of that though, which they needed. They're down five to two. There's a press by Philadelphia with a minute and a half left. With 1:22 left, however, the Leafs get a power play. Philadelphia taking a penalty in the offensive zone. So that rolls over into the third. The Flyers finish the kill. They allowed two shots during that in total. Uh, power play then for the Flyers. Lawton tips one wide. There's a shorthanded rush by Marner that helps to end that power play. Uh, Brown has a net drive that saved. We get two minutes of four on four. Matthews with a shot that saved. The Leafs then get a power play and they score on it. It's Matthews from Tavares at 13-13. So Matthews, who's been all around it, little snake bit lately, gets the goal. And that would be your final goal of the game. Toronto wins this one 6-2. They go to 25-9-7 with the win. Philadelphia's four-game winning streak's over. They're 15, 18, and 7 with the loss. The shots, 12, 11, Toronto in the first, 14 to 12, Philly in the second. Both teams had 11 shots in the third. The final shots, 36 to 35, Philadelphia. Power plays, Toronto 1 for 2, Philadelphia 0 for 4. The hits, 41 to 17, Philadelphia. A little more physical. Uh, and then uh, Murray saves 34 out of 36. Hart saves 29 out of 35 for the Flyers. Uh, now they got to start a new winning streak next game. Sorry for the pauses. I got two rabbits and they're they're kind of, well, they need they need to go upstairs. And they will as soon as this video is done. All right, Boston and Anaheim. Okay, so, you know, looking at this beforehand, I thought, you know, if Boston's a normal team, the 22 hours between start times of last night and tonight's game, that could negatively impact them. What a load of crap. All right, so <laughs> this is a team that just continues to defy all logic and expectation because... Teams aren't supposed to win this often. It's not supposed to happen. Not in the National Hockey League. And for Boston, it was Swayman versus Gibson. So right away, I'm thinking, I hope, I hope Swayman has a good game. Because if he has a bad game against Anaheim, they'll be out. Right? All the Swayman sucks people will be out. I had nothing to worry about. Uh, Hall has a net drive that's defended. Pasternak has a rush that's defended as well. But during that same set of plays, Pasternak scores from Krejci and Zaka at 349. It's a one-timer. And so Pasternak was starting what was going to be a real... Uh, don't be surprised when he's one of the three stars of the week tomorrow. He may end up being the first star of the week. 
Uh, so the Bruins press for another. Carlo fires one high on a one-timer. Uh, Ducks say goal, but the net was off clearly before that went in. So that doesn't count as a Ducks goal. Zegers was hoping it would. And then on the next shift, Krejci scores at 9.46 from Pasternak and Zaka. It's because of course, right? Uh, shots are 4-2 to two for the Bruins with 8.5 minutes left. There wasn't a lot going on. I thought, well, you know, it's kind of a sleepy game. <laughs> Little did I know. Uh, McAvoy has a chance that's held. And then on a one-timer, Zegers, this time the net's on and it counts. He scores from Stroman Vitrano at 16.55. We then had two minutes of 4-on-4. Four four. It evolves to a 4-on-3 power play for the Ducks that then became a 5-on-4. There were 26 seconds left on the Ducks power play to start the second period where the Ducks were only down one. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, maybe it'll be still be interesting. Uh, Bruins finished the kill. Lindholm then had a shot that was held. You could tell he was fired up being back where he, he played for so long. Uh, near miss for Craig Smith. Craig Smith had one of his better games tonight, too. Uh, Bruins press at six minutes. Hall to Frederick. There's a near miss there. Shots are six to four for Boston at the half. Uh, power play for the Bruins. Pasternak has a shot that's held. Marshawn misses one wide. And then Pasternak scores. Uh, at 11.56, it's a power play goal. Late in the third period, they actually awarded an assist to Bergeron. Very anticlimactic. That's actually the 600th assist in the career of Patrice Bergeron. So kudos to him on his 600th assist that was awarded during the third period, and nobody got to really congratulate him. Uh, and then at 12.13, on a break, here come the hats. Pasternak from Grizzlick and Krejci. And considering this was in Anaheim, first off, the Let's Go Bruins chance constantly, that was... A mild surprise, we know where Anaheim is right now in the grand scheme of things, but a lot of Boston fans in that crowd. And all I could think was, boy, it'd be fun to be there. <laughs> that would have been fun. And, and considering how expensive the Boston games in Vancouver are, it might be cheaper just to take a, a quick little flight down to Anaheim and watch a game down there. Watch Boston play. It's probably cheaper than watching it here, considering parking and all the other costs to go into a Vancouver game. And anyways, um, so yeah, there's fun. But anyways, yeah, the, the hats rain down. The Ducks press to answer. Bergeron then has a chance that's saved. 4.36 left. The Ducks have a power play. Now, they're down 4-1. to one. They really needed a goal here. Terry was denied. That power play's killed off. Ducks press late. Swayman holds. So we're going to the third period. And right away, the Let's Go Bruins chance are out. Uh, you, would, you would have thought this was in Boston, right? Uh, early power play for the Bruins. It's killed off. There weren't really any good looks there. So Marshawn scores. From Frederick and Coyle at 6.20. And he buried it because Gibson had come out to make a previous save. He still hadn't got back into position. So Marshawn's like, all right, I'll, I'll just put it in then. Uh, Terry then had a rush chance that was saved. And then from a sharp angle, Lindholm adds another at 11.26. And then just because why not to really get that no mercy magnet up there and make sure it stays there. Because I put it up there when it was 6-1. to one. Coyle scores to make it 7-1. to one. From Grizzlick and Frederick at 16.10. Boston wins this one 7-1. to one. They go to 32-4-4. They're on pace for 64 wins in 80 games. So about 65 wins. I, I don't think they get there, but they keep defying expectation. Uh, for Anaheim, like I keep expecting them to be human is what I'm expecting, and it's just not a thing. Uh, they outscored their three California opponents 16-5. I know California's not what it was. I understand Anaheim's 12-25-4 with the loss, but just ridiculous. Uh, shots in this one favor Boston the whole way. 12 to 6 in the first, 13 to 12 in the second, 17 11 in the third. Final shots are 42 to 29 for the Bruins. Power plays Boston 1 for 2, Anaheim 0 for 2. Uh, hits 19 to 18, Anaheim. Swayman saves 28 out of 29. Gibson saves 35 out of 42. I will say this for John Gibson. He's a pro. Late in this game, he was still making kick saves and trying everything he could to keep the puck out of the net, even though it was 7 to 1. So. Rough night for Anaheim, but if you want Connor Bedard, this is what you want to see. And for Boston, just, yeah. So now they get to go home. They'll take the red eye. They'll go home. And we'll see how things work at home where they haven't lost in regulation yet this year because they keep proving that uh, they're just not stopping. And and again, you know, I just keep thinking back to Bergeron saying this team seems to have something special about it. They have a 14-game point streak now. So... Yeah, it's been a while since Boston lost in regulation. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.